Now, Britain's major allies, from Canada to Germany, and including Mr. Trump's America, as Michael was saying, rallied behind our country today, less than 24 hours after the Prime Minister unveiled a range of retaliatory measures against Russia in response to the attempted murder of a former Russian spy in the genteel cathedral city of Salisbury. The British government believes that the deadly nerve gas used was Russian and that it was deployed on British soil by the Russian state or its surrogates. NATO in general and America in particular agree. Washington today announced fresh sanctions against major Kremlin figures in response to hostile and illegal Russian activity in the US. Britain is braced for a Russian response to its sanctions and is expected by the weekend. But I'm told tonight that the UK has further measures to announce when that happens. Even the leader of the opposition says the evidence now points to Russian complicity, though he doesn't rule out Russian gangsters. But of course, the Putin government in Moscow denies it all. Here's former Kremlin advisor Alexander Nekrasov with his take of the week. As a chill in the air in Britain, Theresa May, the ice queen, has sent a message to President Putin. Take back half of your diplomats and get ready for your oligarchs in London to get frisked. And no Prince William or Boris Johnson going to your World Cup. But jokes aside, the situation is serious, with three people, including the ex-Russian spy Sergei Skripal, in a critical condition after suspected chemical attacks in Salisbury. The British government thinks Russia is behind it. Moscow is denying it, but London isn't buying it. <sighs> Let's make one thing clear. Mr. Skripal ended up in the UK in a spy swap nearly 10 years ago and security services never go after spooks who've been exchanged. It's naive to assume that only Russia has access to the nerve agent dubbed Novichok, which had first been produced in the Soviet Union in the 1970s. And it's very probable that most laboratories like Porton Down have possession of it. Rogue agents and terrorists could have got their hands on the nerve agents, not forgetting groups and individuals that have an interest in framing Russia, like ISIS or some oligarchs living in London. Theresa May has allowed herself to be dragged into the media's anti-Russian frenzy. So she had no choice but to act. And she sent an ultimatum to Moscow. Explain yourself or your diplomats get it. Moscow ignored the ultimatum and 23 Russian diplomats were told to leave. And no British officials are going to the World Cup. Make no mistake. The incident in Salisbury is a grave one, but Russian gas will continue to hit British homes and BP will continue to make billions in Russia. While politicians argue, life goes on. I know it's Machiavellian, but that's how it is. And Alexander joins us now. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Michael, how sure are you that Russia is behind the Salisbury attack? Uh, I bro in behind what the Prime Minister has said. Uh, it's either that Russia has attacked us or it is that Russia has lost control of this uh, agent. And uh, <clears throat> the Russians were invited to give an explanation about that. Can I, can I say broadly, I mean, this week has made me so thankful that I live in a liberal democracy with an accountable government whose main purpose is to protect its citizens. Uh, and Russia, I'm afraid, is a kleptocracy which has turned into a mafia state. Uh, the, the Russian state has for, I would say, centuries uh, murdered its own citizens. It did so under the Tsar. 
Uh, it did so under Stalin on an industrial scale, and that continues today. And if any of us, you know, well, it's not murdering its own citizens on an industrial scale today. I said, why don't you listen to me? I said Stalin murdered them on an industrial scale. No, but then scale, you said it's doing and so it's today. And continuing to murder its citizens today. But not on an industrial scale. Not on an industrial scale. But Reason? nonetheless, it is murdering its how, citizens. How sure are you that Russia is uh, behind the attack? Um, I think it's fairly clear that all roads point to Russia. It's not just a question of the nerve agent that was used, it's also the fact that this fits with a pattern of behaviour that we've seen from Russia across the world, but including in Britain in recent years. And it's also the fact that there's a fairly clear motive. I mean, it's not just the identity of the person who was targeted alongside his family, it's also the fact that we've got presidential elections coming up on Sunday in Russia, and it seems to me that there is a very clear reason why the Russian government would want to see... What, what would that um, reason be? Well, it seems to me fairly obvious that um, that Putin is very, very keen to see turnout increased. And that provides a motive, which says to me that when Theresa May said, we want you to come and explain yourselves, we should have seen a much better reaction from the Russian government if okay. there wasn't a clear motive. All roads lead to Russia. Well, I don't see any road leading to Russia, first of all, because why would Putin want this before the election? Do you think that Russians actually are keen on seeing chemical weapons used to kill somebody abroad? Well, all of the state media organisations immediately started pumping out a message about Western conspiracies, the sort of thing that you were just repeating on that screen, to be honest. I, it suits Putin's agenda to have... Um, some kind of uh, alliance of Western powers um, being tough about Russia because it works with his narrative. Yeah, well, most Russian people, will, you don't have to be a supporter of Putin, will regard the victim of the attack as a traitor. Yes, but he was exchanging the spy swap, Andrew, and uh, security services don't go after these people because the whole concept of a spy swap is you don't go after these people. That's like a, a, a sort of a immunity from an attack. But you make it sound as though Russia plays by the rules. It does not. No, the security service have to play by the rules because otherwise they'll start killing each other randomly and so on. Okay, and can, on this, I mean, one of the reasons why the British authorities, uh, particularly the chemical weapons experts, are so sure it's Russia is because of this Novichok nerve gas. Only Russia has produced it. Indeed, Russia didn't tell us it was producing it. It was only later, when the Soviet Union broke up, that we discovered it. The idea, as you said in your piece, that ISIS or other terrorists could use it, it's a really dangerous thing to use. It has to be done in the most skilled way. If you make the slightest mistake in preparing it, not only would you kill yourself, you'd kill everybody in, street, in all the streets around you. Yeah, Alexander went further and said it might just be um, a Russian dissident or plutocrat. Or... I mean, that just well, first, doesn't really no, but pass First of all, the let, test. let me give you a few facts which point to other countries and other groups. The inventor and creator of Novichok lives in America since 1996. Indeed. Now, do you really believe that the Americans did not talk to him, did not uh, uh, find out his secrets, what he invented, and so on? So the Americans are behind it? No, no, no. I'm telling you that how this spread of this Novichok oh, no, no, no. is going Under around the, the laboratory. Under the international chemical agreements to which Russia is a party, Britain and Russia and America are al allowed to hold minute quantities of, course, of this of course. so that they can work on antidotes if it should appear, exactly. as has happened in Salisbury, and so they can keep an eye on whether it's spreading around the world. No one, that's not in doubt. Russia signed up to that. The question is, the, the only country that has produced it as a weapon is Russia. But why, why don't you think that it could have disappeared from other laboratories across the world? Because it wasn't other than in Porton Down, the American one and the Russian one, it hasn't been in any other laboratories across the world. Well, so there, was one there, more than Russia. there was one major laboratory in central Russia that produced the weapons grade stuff that was used in Salisbury. The problem I have with the statement about Russia's involvement is that the words highly possible uh, applying to the Russian involvement. This is not definite. You know, a, a follow on mine on Twitter said, if you are told that this parachute will open, highly possible, will open, you will not jump. 
because that's not certainty. That's not dead evidence, you know, dead certain evidence. And she said highly possible. If this it, is not... Oh, sorry. So I was just... If it was... And I understand that the, we don't have definitive evidence, not that, that we could produce in a TV show. I understand that. But there seems to be a lot of accumulating stuff. And if not Russia, who? So if it was Russia, what was the purpose? Well, I think it might have been firstly to see whether NATO could have been split, as I said in my uh, first answer, at a time when, you know, Britain's involved in Brexit and, and Donald Trump finds it very difficult to come out and condemn uh, Russia. I think it could be to send a warning to uh, people who are involved in counterintelligence at the moment. It may be that the British are having success in penetrating Russian intelligence at the moment and there are people who need to be warned off. Uh, oh, you I, mean I, Russians who are helping... Yes. Our intelligence services, yes. right. Um, I think Putin likes, firstly, to be able to deny it, but denies it with such a sort of complacent arrogance that, you know, it's difficult to take his denial seriously. So at the one, on the one hand, he's saying to the Russian people, we're not murderers. On the other hand, he's saying to the Russian people, look, we can get people wherever they are in the world. This traitor has died. We are now a world power. Uh, we have recovered from our humiliation. We are dictating terms of the West. This all falls in... And that's a popular message in, in Russia. Yes. So he, he manages to have it both, way, but, but both ways by these smug denials, which, which no one can take seriously, in my view. What well, I, I think you, 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 you treat Russian people as if they're bloodthirsty. And, uh, no, no, the, the, I have nothing... nothing no, no, I, but, but, I but love you, the Russian No, people. but what you are saying the here Russian is government. that they're saying, oh, wonderful, our president can order a hit and it, it is carried out and so on. They don't like that as well. So I don't understand, and I think Andrew asked a very good question. What is the reasoning behind it? No. They have the World Cup, which, has, which is in danger. They have the election that causes a problem. The, the timing is already questionable for Russia. I don't understand no, the, the your only, logic. The, your logic the, doesn't the, work. The, the only credible candidate, the only credible alternative candidate in the election has been attacked. Uh, has been brutally attacked and is badly injured. Uh, all the other candidates have been forced to uh, withdraw from the election. The election is a farce. We know. So, we, so we why know did he need to election. do this then? If he's a shoe in, and he is. Exactly. Why did he need to do this? I, 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 I didn't say it particularly had anything to do with the election. But, I mean, but to be to be fair to Alexander, let me. I mean, let me give you an example. When we kill a terrorist with a drone, actually, the British people are quite happy about that. So I don't. I, I don't dispute that the Russian people might be quite happy okay. if, Let me if bring a traitor these, uh, is killed. In, in. What, was Mrs May's response robust enough? Um, no, I, I think it was right. Um, you know, if you look at what happened um, in Salisbury, the, there is, I think there is a real question about the timing of this attack. And as I was saying earlier, the question about presidential elections... Uh, uh, a president who was worried about turnout in those elections. The level of the attack demanded a response from the UK, but um, not necessarily a collective, uh, serious response that would uh, seriously frighten Russia. And I think you can feel it from the sense of this conversation that we're having. You know, if, the, if anyone really seriously thinks that Russia is very upset that we're not sending ministers to the World Cup, then think again. No, but and, sanctions, and actually, are, and actually, sanctions are hurting Russia. Well, the, the, the sanctions that, would really, run, yes, the sanctions that would really in hurt Russia run. is if we went after the But I still don't see the logic and, and, that's and the where, connection between and, no, the big I, events. I understand that, and you've made that, that point very, very well. But I wonder if, uh, if Mr Putin, who is clearly going to have a landslide victory this weekend, is he in the longer run still dealing from a position of weakness? And does he need to do things like this almost in a bread and circuses way because it keeps the population? I mean, he presides over an economy which is smaller than Italy's. It's not a big economy. He presides over an economy overwhelmingly dependent on fossil fuels. Its industrial capacity is crumbling. Uh, four and a half million Russians have left the country in recent years. And there is poverty almost of third world standards in places like the Urals. Is he really weak and not the strong man that we think he is? Well, I, you see, we're discussing a very specific uh, problem here about this incident in Salisbury and how Russia can be connected or not connected to it. And I don't really see 
any connection. Okay, he's a weak leader. Let's assume that. Yes, and 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 let's no, assume. No, I was asking. No, no, no. But no, no I, I'm just trying to to balance this with the problem. Okay, he's a weak leader. How does that help him? He doesn't. Uh, so I can't see any logical explanation for Putin and his people to go after a man who's not even known in Russia. Nobody knows about. It was quite low grade. A very low grade. There is no point in it. There unless are people you consider that in the Britain, point, unless you consider like that Oleg Gordievsky, who has caused. A response. There is a peop people here in Britain, like Oleg Gordievsky. Now that was damage, sure. serious damage. That, and Litvinenko why, was publicly attacking Mr. Putin as well. There was a book well, Litvinenko was small fish as well. I'm sorry, but he, but he this, was but actively so publicly attacking. So why was he murdered? Well, um, in my opinion, uh, uh, Russian, mean, that, that is one of the, the Russian state had nothing to do with it at all. Well, well, okay, indeed, that's but, but this is a long discussion. And, uh, and, and we don't have time uh, yes, uh, for it drag us well away that. from this problem. But um, we've gone over some of the issues tonight. And I was very grateful to you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now it's late. Mark Linus late. Who he, I hear you ask? Well, Mr. Linus is a former eco-warrior who has lately repented his activist past. He